In this segment, we're going to um, look at the graph of a two-variable function. In particular, we're going to look at number 28 on page 938 of your Anton calculus book, which is f of x, y equals x squared plus y squared. Now, before we can actually graph this function, we need to be able to understand, again, what types of things are in the domain and what types of things are in the range. So remember, our domain is going to be a set of xy coordinates. In fact, all of our xy coordinates because there are no restrictions on what numbers we can square and add together. So the domain is the set of all xy such that x and y are real numbers. In other words, it's the xy plane. Now what's our range going to be? Well, our range is going to be a set of real numbers, not pairs of coordinates, because once we put in, say, say we were putting in the point 2, 1, then by the time we evaluate this expression, we're going to be down to the number 5. So it's just going to be a set of values, which I'm going to call z values, such that, in particular, one thing I notice here, um, and, you know, you can, it's, it's relatively easy to, to observe that the smallest number that we can get because x, and, x is being squared, y is being squared, and they're being added together is going to be 0. We can't have any negative numbers resulting, in other words. So z appears to have only positive values. Oops, positive or 0. Okay, now uh, notice that I chose the, um, the variable z because what we're going to do is we're going to think of this as z equals x squared plus y squared. And so, which makes sense, I mean we're just basically adding a third dimension to our function and so this is just like graphing a quadric surface. In fact, this is a quadric surface. And let's go back, if you would, to page 846 in your textbook for a moment and just take a look at table 12.7.1 and let's try and identify which quadric surface this is. So on page 846, we have um, six graphs. I'm looking at the top four. Um, here's our ellipsoid, our elliptic cone, our paraboloid of one sheet, and our elliptic paraboloid. This is the function in the middle of the page. This is the function that we're concerned about graphing. So we want to look and see which of these, if any, this uh, fit this pattern of z equals x squared plus y squared. Well, um, neither of these are going to work because z is squared, and the same with this elliptic cone up here. But let's look at the elliptic paraboloid for a minute. This is anything of the form z equals x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. And it's the a squared over b squared, uh, or rather the a squared and b squared are the denominators with the addition in the middle that gives us the elliptic effect here. And so what we see is that if a was equal to 1 and b was equal to 1, it would be a very special kind of ellipse, which is a circle, right? Because um, the major and minor axes would be the same length. And this fits the function we're looking at. Um, if a is 1 and b is 1, this would simplify down to z equals x squared plus y squared. So really what we're being asked to graph in this is an elliptic paraboloid. Okay, so let's continue here. Um, again, we have the function f of x, y equals x squared plus y squared. This is number 28 in your textbook. And we've decided that um, it would be reasonable to allow this variable f of x, y to be called z. So we can think of the x, y, z coordinate system and that this would match up with a circular paraboloid. Now, 
we know that a circular paraboloid, and, and it's really called an elliptical paraboloid, but in this case the ellipses are really circles, is going to look like this, okay? But in order to um, see exactly what the values of x, y, and z are going to be, um, what we're going to do is we're going to draw level curves like in a contour map. So to do this, I'm going to, instead of drawing the um, x, y, z plane, I'm, or x, y, z uh, coordinate system rather, I'm going to just draw the x, y plane and look at what the x and y values uh, are going to um, graph out to be for particular z values. So here's what I mean. Let's take, um, for example, when z is equal to 0. If z is equal to 0, then we have 0 equals x squared plus y squared, okay, which can only happen um, at the point 0, 0 in the x, y plane. So the first part of my um, level curve, or series of level curves rather, is just going to be the point zero, zero, and that happens when z is equal to zero. Let's use a different color here, so this is when z equals zero. We'll draw this point in red. All right, now next, let's consider what happens when, say, z is equal to one. Well, if z is equal to 1, then we're going to have 1 equals x squared plus y squared, which is a circle of radius 1. So I'm going to draw into my xy plane a circle of radius 1. And I'm going to make a note that this happens when z is equal to 1. Okay, now I'm going to skip up to z equals 4 just because um, when we graph these, these are circles and we know that the radius is a square root and I'd like to just look at one uh, circles that have whole number radii. Oh, let's not use red again. Let's do purple. So this is going to be the circle of radius 2, but it's going to occur when z is equal to 4. which is going to be quite a bit higher. So corresponding to these three graphs, these three level curves, let's come back over here and sketch this in on this curve on the left. So let's start with when z is equal to 0. So that is just the point at the bottom of this circular paraboloid. And that's when z is equal to 0. Now let's go up to when z is equal to 1. So z is equal to 1 is a circle of radius 1. This blue circle which is going to look something like this. Okay, that's where z is equal to 1. And then we're going to go up quite a bit further to z equals 4. Here's z equals 4. which might be this circle at the top. So what I have here is an example of a level curve which is one way of analyzing at least what the um, function will look like from the top when you're looking at um, just the xy plane. Notice that the method for drawing level curves is simply to choose different values of z and then draw the corresponding curves. And we could continue with more values of z if we wanted to. Um, but what we were asked here is to sketch the graph of the function and if you have a two-dimensional, um, sorry, a two-variable function, you're graphing in three space and you would have a graph like this. 
Now, let's go back to this graph and um, you may be able to see the where the circles came from by looking at the picture from the XY um, direction. But how would we know what is happening as far as this parabolic shape here other than referring back to our um, quadric surfaces from the previous chapter? Well, remember how we approached quadric surfaces is um, we looked at um, what they look like from the top and from each side. So in other words, we would want to take a look at what the cross section is for this curve in the YZ plane. So let's do that really quickly. How would we get the front view of this curve in the YZ plane? Well, we would let X be zero because X is zero everywhere in the YZ plane. So what happens if we let X equal zero? Let's separate out here. If we let X equal zero, then we're going to have the equation Z equals Y squared, which is just a parabola. So from the front, we see this curve which also makes sense if we're having larger and larger circles here. Those seem to go together well. And then from the other side, meaning the XZ view, we would have to let Y equal zero, we would get Z equals X squared, and we'd see that from the side we have a parabola as well. So that all just confirms what we know is true, that this is a circular paraboloid.